Hey everybody, just a real quick content warning. Uh, with this episode, we are going to talk about suicidal ideations, attempted suicide, as well as uh, mental health, mental illness, and uh, its portrayal within this episode. Uh, not only that, there is the character of Princess Cookie, who uses he, him pronouns, that is never questioned, that is never challenged, so we throughout this also refer to Princess Cookie using he, him pronouns. I just wanted to let you know that ahead of time so that if you needed to either come back to this episode or prep, FYI. All right, enjoy. Is it transphobic? We'll be addressing issues of transphobia and transmisogyny. We may also address issues of racism, classism, ableism, and various other intersectional issues in this podcast. So this is a trigger warning. The panelists on Is It Transphobic will also use strong language. So listener discretion is advised. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Is It Transphobic podcast. My name is Ashley, and I use she, her, and they, them pronouns. Today, I'm being joined by... Hi, Kat, they, them. And I'm Krista, and I'm she, her, and they, them. Awesome. So today we're talking about Adventure Time, which uh, is absolutely a show that I have binged the entire thing multiple times. I, I thoroughly enjoy this show. We're specifically going to hone in on one episode, though I'm sure because Adventure Time is very large and there's a lot of like weird systems in place within the show. Other things might come up, but ultimately we're going to focus on season four, episode 14, uh, entitled Princess Cookie. Now, Kat, Krista, I'm curious, have you watched Adventure Adventure Time, have you seen this episode before? What are your thoughts going in prior to watching this episode? So I have, I've watched Adventure Time like all the way through, like beginning to end, like binging it once. I was doing it during quarantine. I got like halfway through and then I lost my motivation to do anything. Um, so that's what happened. Um, hey, it, but, that happens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it was like, I was just like, I can't watch TV; it's too much. Um, but so yeah, and and then there's like a bunch of episodes, especially earlier ones that I've seen, you know, just a bunch of times casually. Yeah, yeah. I've I, seen the first season, but and then like random episodes of the rest of it because it, it's very long. <laughs> Yeah. Like, it's like what, like 10 seasons? Are, yeah. 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 Like the episodes are quick. They're only like a 10 minute per. So mm -hmm. like, I think they, they put them as like two episode blocks when they originally aired. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately like it's, it's, it's a lot of material. It's a dense show. It really is. Yeah. yeah and you see the character grow up, which is kind of yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then now HBO Max has uh, the like, I know that they've got that BMO episode, but I don't know if the entire new Adventure Time show is just BMO or if it's. Oh, I didn't know about this. Oh, no, I didn't either. Yeah, it the episode that I saw was really good. It, it has Randall Park as a character and it's like, yeah, it's it's cool. It's cute. It's fun. It's BMO. How can you how can you say Love no? BMO. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but let's talk about Princess Cookie. Had you heard, like, had you watched this episode prior? Is this episode, like, was this the first time, again, like, I know that we've jumped in and out of the series. So was this, like, the first time for either of you watching it? I've seen it before, but just, like, in my watch throughs. Like, so, like, maybe, like, one or two times I've seen it. This was my first time because I had only seen the first season and this is, what, season four? Mm -hmm. I think so. I, I hadn't gotten to it yet, basically. <laughs> <laughs> totally cool yeah so it, it's so weird because especially like as i'm watching this because i remember i'd seen it and it kind of struck me as i, I don't want to say odd but it definitely struck me in a way the first time i watched it and i was just like there's a lot of there's a lot going on in this episode mm -hmm. um like we start the whole thing off with a hostage negotiation that feels immediately like even before i remember watching it feeling like this feels like dog day afternoon <laughs> Yo, yeah. <laughs> like the entire, like, because we, we've covered Dog Day Afternoon on the podcast, and it's just like, it's a very specific feeling. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. There, you know, like there's there's a billion and five pieces that have done the dog day afternoon. Like, all right, we're in a, we're in a hostage negotiation situation. No, no, no. Everything's going to be like 
fine. It's just like, wow, okay. And it's just um, like not the energy of the show. Like, yeah. uh, watching it this past time, it, it just felt so jarring. It was like just not when you sit down to watch Adventure Time, that's not the feeling that you think you're gonna get straight off. Right. Mm. I agree. Yeah. Like I I especially when you've got PB, when you've got Princess Bubblegum immediately anti the character. <laughs> And that happens occasionally throughout the series. Like you'll notice, like th it, but it feels very jarring and out of her normal character. She so kind of scares me a little bit. Yo, she's she's a lot. <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> she, I mean, like I love PB as a character. At the same time, she is a princess. She is authoritarian as fuck. Yeah, like yeah. throughout the whole series. <laughs> like, like she does not. She is not That's afraid not to flex true. that muscle, and it's just like, whoo. <laughs> And I'm glad to hear you say that, too, because I just finished the first season and then jumped to season four. And I thought, did I miss something? <laughs> mm. I think you would do it gradually, I feel like. And I feel like that jump would be kind of, I guess, confusing, for lack of a better word. Because it's definitely, like, gradual throughout the series that you see more and more that she's just, like, twisted. Yeah. And and part of it is like, you know, she always kind of justifies it as I have to rule. I have to be the, the princess of the Candy Kingdom. I have to do this, that, and the other thing. And it's just like, okay, I hear that. But at the same time, like, and they're, they're, they do give her a lot of character moments throughout the series. But at the same time, it's just like, it, it gets harder and harder throughout the series to really justify Princess Bubblegum in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, in the very yeah. first episode, she's, what, doing necromancy. <laughs> right, because it's all in perspective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sets a tone. <laughs> but yeah, so with this episode, and again, like this this jarring moment of Princess Bubblegum being very absolute about Cookie, about this this character who we haven't even really met. We've just seen Cookie, and Cookie uses he him pronouns throughout this. Just to throw this out to the audience, so it, it, I will be referring to Cookie as he him. But Cookie, you find out through Jake. I'll I'll get there in a sec. But essentially, Jake wants to be a mailman to try and infiltrate, and Finn wants to be a shadow, and so. Princess Bubblegum's like, no, you're not really like a mailman. What about a milkman? So there's this weird <laughs> subplot of Jake suddenly wanting to be a mailman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it seemed like it seemed like a hill he really wanted to die on suddenly. Yeah. <laughs> like it yeah. was this was his passion that he never talked about before. Which admittedly is kind of the Venture Time. The Adventure <laughs> yeah, Time. Yeah, I get aesthetic. that. Aesthetic is just like, yeah. I'm making a very specific choice now. It's like, yeah? Yeah. Always. It's always been like this. <laughs> like, oh, okay. You're, you're telling me it's always been like this. So I guess it's always been like this. And they're only 10 minute episodes. They really have to put it out there. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> it, they it do do a lot in 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, they do. It, it definitely feels like the 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 actor mentality of make bold choices and stand by them. It's like, well, okay, yeah. <laughs> <Bold Yeah. choice. laughs> yep. And he's a dog too, so dog mailman. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know? Oh man. Like, and even then, like there's a lot That's in a this. Lot. <laughs> and then milkman and cookie. There are so many levels to this. I did not There really care. are. <laughs> I've thought a lot about this this last week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the first the first line that we hear, and I, I love this, is Princess Bubblegum on a on a loudspeaker saying, How about I give you a big cowboy hat? So you as the audience are being brought in with this like, okay, we know that there's a hostage situation. We know that her first option is, what if I give you a big cowboy hat? Which again, in the world of adventure time, makes total sense if that had nothing to do with his motivations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like but yeah. at the same but at the same time his response is essentially i like no i want the crown give me the crown and we hear uh finn ask pb like why why does he want your crown and her response is i don't know he guys i don't know guys he's crazy and that word gets thrown around a lot in this episode 
Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which admittedly is one of those things where like that word is a very charged word for a lot of folks. So I just want to throw that out. Like, hey, that that's a very charged word. And especially where by the end of the episode, we are in an asylum. Yeah. Cookie has been put into an asylum. Uh, and I realize I'm jumping a lot because there's a lot that happens in between the initial onset of what's happening to Cookie being put in an asylum. But like, again, like there's this whole like undercurrent of he's crazy. He's crazy that I feel like I, I again, I know that I've jumped a huge step, but there's there's so much in that that feels really oddly intentional. And I think that's my issue with this episode. It feels very oddly intentional. I yeah, agree. it it's like it, it definitely feels intentional. And I, I either they're completely ignorant or they did it on purpose. Like, I feel like it's one or one or the other. But I'm not entirely sure what it is they are trying to do. Be, like, I lean on the towards the like, they do have queer representation, excuse me, and are like, you know, it's a it's a nice kids show that everybody likes. It's fun. Like you, you, I would assume that they were doing it with a positive message and maybe they just messed that up, but it just kind of seems like they, in trying to talk about problematic things, they did problematic things. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I watched this episode with my husband who is cisgender straight man and he thought it was just bad writing, but I don't mm. think so. Because there, there's so many choices being made in this narrative. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I just think it it does ultimately lead to perhaps bad writing, but there are so many choices along the way here. Yeah, the plot yeah. just doesn't make sense also. Like, it's it's got to, you know, it's going to be hard to write around events that are just ridiculous even for that show. Yeah. Like just to and just to state it a lot of because again, like I realized I jumped ahead. So for those who have not <laughs> yeah. actually watched the episode, uh, what happens is it's revealed Jake as this milkman is talking to Cookie and Jake is like, oh, yeah, you know, Princess Bubblegum told me, oh, you can't be a like you can't be a mailman. You got to be a milkman. And so Cookie's like, wait, what? And so Jake makes up the whole thing. But Cookie reveals that when Cookie was an orphan. Princess Bubblegum, like everyone was too sad to do anything. And I mean, mood, but like, no. <laughs> yeah. but in, in that moment, Princess Bubblegum showed up and suddenly everyone was happy and they wanted to hear the story that she was reading. And so to Cookie, he saw this and said, oh, a princess, that's what I want to be. To which Princess Bubblegum shot him the fuck down. <laughs> like immediately like laughed at him said this is not something you can ever be i don't remember the exact quote so don't that's not the exact that's an that's an implied quote but it, it was it, it was kind of traumatizing like and going back with the lens of like a trans viewership lens it's like mm -hmm. damn and especially where she's like hardline no he's crazy there's no more that we need to talk about this it's just like ah, ah. Like, yeah, it's, I feel like that moment with, with Princess Gu Bubblegum when, when a Cookie was a kid is like, I feel like the way it wants to read is like one is supposed to be like a minor thing that ends up, you know, being something like Princess Bubblegum might not even uh, recognize it or remember it, but it made such an impact. I, I will also state again, because like I've, you know, like we've analyzed Dog Day Afternoon and Dog Day Afternoon is very much about, it's more a matter of a uh, person trying to rob a bank so that he can earn money for his partner to get gender affirming surgery. And with this, it's very much, I'm taking this bank hostage so that you can give me a crown to validate me as a princess and again like a cookie i i love that princess in a way is not a gendered term to cookie like to cookie yes a, a yeah. princess is 
very much the person that has power, the person who can make people happy. And so in that, I love it. But I feel like the way they treat Cookie and the way that they don't even name that kind of does more harm. If they named it, if they said, like, you can't be a princess because you're a boy, there would be other issues. But at the same time, I feel like at least naming it and then having Jake be very sympathetic would actually read a lot better. I don't know. What, what yeah. are your thoughts on that, though? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, honestly, I was confused that it wasn't a gendered thing. And, you know, that's mostly because princess in our culture is, you know, so synonymous with, like, femme shit. So it was like, I I kind of expected when he was like, oh, I want to be a princess, that it was also about being perceived as a woman, a woman cookie. But... The, when, but when it was just about and and I think equating it to just being about power threw me off because I mean I understand he's not necessarily thinking about it like that but that is what it comes down to is if you're a princess everyone will be nice to you and you can do things for people but like also you'll just be loved unconditionally and it struck me I feel like a young cookie child a child cookie could be like oh I want to be a princess and like that can be a thing they think as a child because you know a lot of kids want to be princesses that's cool but I found it hard to believe that like in his entire growing up he never learned that that's not really like you can't grow up and become a princess like you can't go to princess college like it, but like he could do something else that was along those same lines mm. and it it was just like you're just the idea that he it seems like he went from the orphanage straight to the wherever he was is it a bank no a convenience that, store <laughs> yeah, i think it was a convenience store or something like that yeah mm. yeah and just to, yeah, and that just makes to me clear. think of three things Ooh. because i as you were talking, Ashley, I flashed on Revolutionary Girl Utena, mm, mm-hmm. where she becomes a prince. I didn't think of that while I was watching this episode. That was just now I thought of it. But I've kind of flashed on, you know, when you're a kid, kids don't know what things are. They're not super keyed into gender. And so Cookie's saying, you know, people are telling Cookie and other children, oh, you can be whatever you want to be when you grow up. I want to be a princess, except for that. And I got that a lot when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I I feel similarly about being told, like, you can't do this thing because this thing's for boys or whatnot. So it's very, yeah, that's I think that's a very relatable experience. Yeah, for, for a lot of folk. Yeah. And, and I think especially because, and again, because they didn't name it, because they didn't state that, it just adds a lot of other questions to the episode. Yeah. And like, what did uh, other people get out of it? No, go right ahead. <laughs> oh, sorry. What did other people get out of that? Like that aren't, that don't have that kind of trans experience. Yeah. Like, how were they just meant to interpret that? Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. Cause it's not really educate. It doesn't really educate, educate anyone on the, the queer experience. Mm-hmm. It, it just kind of is like, here's something. <laughs> yeah, was it supposed to be a laugh? Was it supposed to be funny? Right. Because it hit me, like, pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. And and especially with the ending, again, because we've got sympathetic Jake, who comes in as a mailman to give, in the very end, give Cookie a crown from the Flower Kingdom. Like, he, he made or had made a special crown from the Flower Kingdom, which is very sweet. Like, that's the thing. All of these things are very sweet, except A... The reason that Cookie now, and I I will try and remember to put a content warning ahead, but for those that are maybe jumping in, if I was not able to get that content warning before this episode, we are going to deal with a little bit of of self-harm and content warning, suicidal ideations. Cookie jumps from a cliff after being chased down by the banana guards and shatters and is put back together, is alive. But at the same time, it's just this moment where Jake and Cookie run off and Jake is ready to defend and Cookie just says, and I wrote this down, so I'm going to look for it while I describe it. And and 
Jake is basically like, I'm going to, I'm going to defend you. No, I'll, I'll go. I'll stop them. We can make it. We can jump this cavern. And Cookie says, no, Jake, I'll never be a princess. But for a minute, I felt like one. And then jumps off the fucking cliff. I hated that so much. Mm -hmm. I was like, in the context of it being a show aimed at children, that was a lot. Like, that was that was a moment. Like, I don't think that's an appropriate thing to show on a children's show regardless, but there was no... It was just, like, the whole... Because he did the whole close his eyes and, like, fall. It was, like, very intense. Mm -hmm. It was. And it was such a shift. Like, I didn't see that coming. Because that's not yeah. where the episode was going up to this point. And that's not usually where the show goes. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and they do they do deal with dramatic things quite often. But at the same time, again, like, this was really off-putting. Like, another quote that got, that happened prior to that was Jake justifying helping Cookie to Finn saying, nah, man, Princess Cookie's a good guy. He was just dealt a bad hand. And, like, I feel that. Like, I do. I feel that. At the same time, like, the bad hand is society telling Princess Cookie... And again, society is not specifically telling Princess Cookie that Princess Cookie can't be something feminine. It's telling him he can't be a princess, but also doing this storyline that ex that has existed for freaking ever uh, about trans issues. And I think that's what it is, is there is this like weird trans lampshade being put onto this and I guess that's why I like I keep going back to this idea of if they just state it, if they state it, and because yeah, they yeah, they don't. Nothing they, is specifically they, stated; it's all implied. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like they they dance around it. Also, I feel like there are many mm -hmm. moments where it could have and probably should have been said, but they like take some kind of detour. It's like a secret. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, incidentally. Is a transphobic now has a store on Redbubble. We don't have uh, trans lampshades yet, but we do. <laughs> I was thinking shower. I want one. They offer shower curtains, <laughs> and I kind of just want to do that. <laughs> I love that. All right, but, but but like back to the back to the thing. Yeah, like it it just feels like there's this weird. Like it just it feels like they wanted to tackle a trans story, and I know Kat, you've mentioned earlier that there's queer representation in Adventure Time, but, e but even then, that queer representation is external to the actual product. And it's weird because, like, mm -hmm. because they specifically would not in any official pieces canonically state that, yes, Princess Bubblegum and Marceline the Vampire Queen had a relationship, but they would tell you that on Twitter. Um, yeah. Yes. Another okay. character is Le Lemon Grab. Is that the character? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like a lot to unpack there too. <laughs> yeah, like why does Lemon Grab get to run free and Cookie gets put in an insane asylum? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> and with with Marceline and Bubblegum, it's like they had one kiss that at the in the finale, but they like built it around it was a thing that needed to be done for energy and magic so that's how the and then it also is the finale so it's not like they're gonna get canceled right. but <laughs> but it does seem like a thing where they they had to like i don't know you know move around it yeah oh man the the representation in the show is just god okay <sighs> the more we talk like the more upsetting i find it yeah don't, honestly the more i don't unpack. An, don't analyze your favorites kids <laughs> we're we're doing it so you don't have to oh hey i'm not i'm just gonna throw this out i'm not gonna not binge adventure time again but at the same time like mm -hmm. man fuck this episode all right yeah. well and didn't this episode get nominated for a bunch of awards i did it i did not get a chance to research that <sighs> all right we're this is uh yeah. this is the whole <laughs> Yeah, I, I do remember when it came out, I I heard a lot of positive shit 
about it being a trans allegory. At this time, I wasn't really engrossed in the trans community. So the people that I saw about it were mainly like, saw, talking about it were mainly cis gay people or bi people, you know, cis queer people. But it was kind of like, they, I feel like they saw the fact that it had those undertones at all as a good thing. Yeah. And I don't know if that's necessarily what happened. Yeah, I think it falls into the trope of you can't have a happy ending. And like, yeah. if Cookie had ended yeah. up in the dungeon, I think that would have made more sense because Cookie did commit a crime. But Cookie didn't end up in the dungeon. Cookie ended up in an asylum. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. God. Yeah. God damn. Okay. Did so, you find it? No, I'm still looking. <laughs> like, hold on. Adventure Time. So Adventure Time, I'm seeing nominations specifically. I just... It might have been on the Adventure Time fan wiki or, or mm. whatever they call that. I'm not sure. Because I know... So this episode came out in... 2012 and 2012 i'm trying to put that in perspective because 2012 was like i feel like this episode should not get any should not get any recognition <laughs> for its trans representation in 2012 in because let me see like let me find out when orange is the new black came out because honestly time is just very i want to because i remember yeah orange i want to say 2013 or 14 uh, okay um yeah yeah 2013 uh, okay so i remember it was like after i graduated from college i mm. binged orange is the new black because you know what else am i gonna do mm. yeah <laughs> So, so this was the linchpin. This was, the, no, it wasn't, it wasn't really, but like, this was the thing that made people go, you know what? We need better trans stories, not <laughs> random cookies who jump off cliffs and get put in an asylum. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So I, I could not find whether it got nominated specifically for the episode, but I was able to find that it pretty much consistently was nominated for a lot of different awards throughout its throughout Adventure Time's existence, which does make sense. It was a very, like, it, it was a well done show. It's just, oh, this episode really missed the mark here. Cool. So <laughs> what else do we have to say? It's, it's like I say, it was just like a 10 minute episode. I think it was interesting that also like his associates live in him yeah i wanted to talk about that yeah i have a lot of questions about it <laughs> i i feel like it's just such that is such an adventure time thing too it's just like don't think about it it's like well i wanna like i know yeah <laughs> and especially with a character that we're specifically supposed to be thinking about their identity and mm -hmm. like more or less their body really when it comes down to it and then it's like Oh, also, there's a bunch of chips, and they live, and they can come in and out, and they're alive, and they're his, like, accomplices. That's all. Mm -hmm. And they seem to have different <laughs> genders. Yeah! Hey, very I, specifically. I on that, yeah? Because <laughs> there's, like, Chipolina is one of them. Yeah. They all have names. <laughs> yeah. They have, yeah, they have a bunch of chips. <laughs> Which I I thought just the naming of the ships was funny. That was my favorite yeah. thing in the world. Really, like, and that's the thing. Like, I will freely admit there were a couple of moments that I chuckled because it's like, yeah, no, it's it's a very well done show. It's just like, what? what, what? Yeah, then it twists, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it becomes very yeah. conventional. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they they tried to put too much in i think or th that's how it seems like the the beginning is very busy and like like you said ashley you come in like in the middle of a hostage situation so it's you're just kind of like thrown off from the get-go but the beginning is like very busy and confusing and then the end is equally confusing but like just kind of bleh yeah <laughs> And like bleh is the nicest word. <laughs> yeah. Very diplomatic of you. Thank you. <laughs> Cause like and and ironically, it's very like cookie cutter for a lot of other plots. And <laughs> I think that's cutter. yeah, like yeah. <laughs> but it, it, like plot-wise, it's very cookie cutter. It's it's very like 
all right, we're hitting all the beats. Oh, this person. Oh, okay. There's got to be some sympathy. Oh, but there's got to be tragedy. Oh, oh. And I'm just, I'm, I'm glad Cookie's not dead. But like, also, I, I, I very much like, and I recognize that this is not necessarily a great stance, but I do take the stance that people should be able to tackle whatever subjects they want. People should be able to go about things in an interesting way. I feel like if you want to tackle issues of suicide, I don't think that not talking about it is the right call, but at the same time to physically show a character, do a thing that would cause self harm is really tough to justify. And the fact that, Oh, the character survived is not necessarily a good angle. If that Mm -hmm. makes any sense. Yeah. I think, and especially, I feel like they just kind of, you know, just stuck it in at the end, especially, you know, because most of the episodes about like the cookies identity and like all that, whatever it is. And then it's like at the very end, it's like all of a sudden about suicide and self harm. And I'm like, it's like, why did th- it was not necessary? Like, mm-hmm. I feel like there were many other ways to end that episode. And I'm not sure why they, they did that. And also, it it messed me up that they showed him because he, he like throws he goes down a ravine mm-hmm. something like that and then at the bottom like they show i guess to show that he's still alive but he's broken into a bunch of pieces and like one of the pieces you can like see his eye blinking it's weird it's yeah. like kind oh, yeah. of disturbing mm. <laughs> yeah i agree yeah, I think I think it was meant to be a combination of a joke but also to show you that he survived but Jesus, like I didn't need to yeah. see Cookie in pieces. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he like, could have just like, been at the hospital. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and he could have been at a normal hospital. Yeah, yeah, I have problems with the way mental health facilities are depicted in media, like generally speaking. Oh yeah, but yeah, this was a bad one. <laughs> mm-hmm. And and admittedly, like the I can't help but think that the whether the intention was this or not, I mean, fuck your intention if it causes harm, but I can't help but think the intention is to say, like, oh, cookie again, like cookie is crazy, for lack of better terms. Yeah. yeah. A- and but why? They never show why. Yeah. Well the why it- and it, it's it's that implied it's uh, like i hate to say it it's the implied transness <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. I, I hate that i think the narrative of a trans character like trying to legitimize their identity and then realizing it's not going to work in their life and then running away and then having some kind of tragic thing happen is like a tired narrative in 2012 it was like like that's we're over that at this point. Mm-hmm. Yep. <sighs> okay. <laughs> now that we're now that we've, I feel like we've properly discussed the episode. I'm gonna get into the the questions that we always ask at the end of the episode. But before I do, is there anything else that we haven't talked about with this that we uh, want to make sure that we state that we're just like we that we just haven't said? No, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I do with yeah. shot being that shadow though. That was pretty pretty sick movement work. Yeah, that's all. Not gonna lie, you know, I was a, uh, I was a little, you know, as a, as a person that does movement occasionally, I, I was a little jealous of Finn's uh, shadow movements. That part was very Adventure Time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was funny. That yeah. and Alvin's hot juice box. I'll, I'll freely admit, yeah, that is a phrase that would confuse me because, like, the entire intention was, okay, Jake, we're gonna go in. I'm gonna go around the back. You're gonna go in and get get cookie on your side then you're gonna yell alvin's hot juice box which will confuse and startle him and then we will attack (laughs) (laughs) amazing also i didn't think about it jake's whole motivation initially for getting close to cookie was to attack him which is just makes it seem like you need an ulterior motive to like talk to a person 
or whatever. You know, it was just mm. like it's true. Yeah, yeah like, like they went in, like he went into their relationship trying to trap Cookie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like a weird place to be. Yeah, did nobody ask why Cookie was <laughs> taking people hostage? <laughs> Other than the crown, they just didn't go any further. Yeah, than I guess just, I guess he was just in a convenience store, and he was like, "This is the time." What is- there's a there's a Futurama robot that I think it's Ricardo who is just like bright red, and Ooh. his whole motivation is to stab people. That was good. <laughs> it's like, it just it it reminds me very much of like that. Is like, okay, now is the time for stabbing. Like, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get that crowd. <laughs> Which is that like Cookie has this like way of talking. I, I I don't know how exactly to describe it, but there's definitely like a voice that they put on for Cookie. Yeah. That that it is just like in that vein of Ricardo the the stabbing robot from Futurama. <laughs> yeah, he's got that like kind of unhinged like yeah that's pretty much it like just kind of that rough unhinged kind of criminal quote unquote sound Mm. it's the voice actor that did that played turk in scrubs too which was interesting oh i didn't know i had to look it up because i thought i know that Mm. voice i didn't expect it to be turk (laughs) um (laughs) i I watch a lot of animated (laughs) things but But that was interesting, like, having seen him act uh, before. Yeah, like it, it feels like, again, this was like a very intentional choice, not necessarily by, and I can't think of his name, but the actor who portrays Turk, because I have seen him in a bunch of other things. And like, yeah, like mm-hmm. it feels like it was a very intentional choice in general to portray this character as, and again, I'm going to use that word crazy. And part of that being this, like the voice that he's using, this idea of like, I just want to be a princess and I'm, I'm feminizing that voice way more than the cookie voice is, but it, it just, ah, okay. All right. So we're going to ask yep. those questions. The ones that we ask at the end of every episode. <laughs> First off. So the questions are, was it enjoyable and was it transphobic? Let's start with, I, I like starting with the one that I feel is more obvious. Let's go with, was it transphobic? And this could be a scale of one to 10. It could be a noise. It could be however you want to express the answer to that question. Was it transphobic? Eh, Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't not transphobic. (laughs) Yeah, I I think, yeah, it was. Mostly because of that kind of left turn they take where Cookie goes off the cliff. The episode goes off the cliff. Um, and 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 that whole point it's not original anymore it's like they were doing they were being their good funny adventure time unique selves and then they hit a point where they're like oh now we have to go to the stereotypical narrative that i don't i don't know if like some producers were saying if you do this story it has to end a certain way i mean that's kind of how it felt it got very conventional at that point and fell Mm -hmm. into the transphobic queer phobic box yeah that's true there was like a distinct break or it's like, am I watching the same episode? Yeah. 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 Am I yeah. still watching Adventure Time? Yeah, I I think they were trying to tell a good story and then it veered into not good in a lot of ways that really could have easily been fixed. Like, yeah. I, I really do see this episode as an episode that, yes, it was transphobic, but, oh, man, if they just zigged when they zagged. Mm. Yes. It really like yeah. 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 Like this this could yeah, have I don't used... think the intention I don't think the intention was transphobic or to be transphobic, but it rarely really is. But I the the final product was definitely a transphobic miss, I think. Yeah. I think it would have been yeah. more fitting with what is adventure time if they had made that leap and then Cookie had become a princess. There's so many princesses in this show. Right. Like he mm-hmm. just wants to be a princess mm-hmm. and make he people be happy. Witch. Like, whatever. And I especially... feel like, I guess because he's because he's in the candy kingdom, right? Yeah, he's a mm-hmm. he's a candy resident, but he's a cookie. That's a whole other thing, I think. <laughs> but I feel like, I guess, because he's in the candy kingdom, he can't, he has to be the prince. If he was going to be a princess, it would be there. He can't just move to a new kingdom and say, I'm your princess. Mm. 
that there's a lot there's a lot of politics to to discuss <laughs> also yeah like i i would have loved it if he he and jake jumped over and made it because here's the thing okay okay just to just to revisit this and again we're going to continue talking about this this jump that cookie took cookie took a jump intentionally to do self-harm if he and jake jumped the ravine together it would have been them taking a chance to try and get out of the situation that they're in and again that's still not a great portrayal that they're putting forth but at least it's all right we're trying to figure out a way to do this and we're going to do it in an adventuresome way which involves some risk and even if again like if they failed or if cookie fell or if there's something then it would have been like oh you tried you got so close and like and again like that would have felt very adventure time mm. yeah yeah if he had tried and and fallen they could have still gotten that stupid ending but like it wouldn't feel as gross i also just realized jake is magic and can stretch his body like however mm -hmm. So, like, he could have just become, like, a bridge or, like, some kind of, you know, thing for, for Cookie to walk on or carried Cookie somewhere else. Like, it's just kind of, they ignored their own rules of the yeah. show yeah. to do this. Mm -hmm. yep. I agree. Yep. Which, admittedly, they do a lot, and then they'll undercut it and be like, oh, yeah. And, like, th that would have been fine, too. Like, we're not going to make it. It's like, can't you stretch? Oh, yeah. Vroop. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, or like, oh, can't you turn into a trampoline? Like, can't you turn into right. a mushy thing that will save me? And it's like, yeah, like, ah, uh, uh, zigging where they should have zagged. All right, mm -hmm. just, just to, just to be transphobic, but get all that sweet, sweet trans representation money that we all know exists. So, was it enjoyable? <laughs> Let me let me frame it like this. Let me frame it like this. <laughs> was it enjoyable before we talked about it? No. Mm. And thinking back to when I first saw it, I do feel like it sat weird with me. I remember seeing everybody talking about the representation and being kind of like, I don't get this episode, but not really like understanding specifically why. But I don't I don't know. I I don't enjoy it. Yeah, like I watching it the first time i was enjoying it up until <laughs> cookie suddenly reverses everything that his life has led up to because i really appreciated jake just accepting cookie without question yeah like and that's and that's the thing like i realized the episode is only 10 minutes but it took like a minute of conversation to jake to be on board and be like oh yeah you're cool yeah <laughs> yeah that was a fast turnaround from like yeah. I want to yeah. help capture you to, oh, you're my best friend. And like, I want to help you with your life. That's, that's remarkable. <laughs> yeah. I feel it's like only... Jake does that. <laughs> yeah. Jake yeah, is, is very, true. he's very in the moment. It's like, oh, okay, mm. this is what we're doing now. <laughs> yeah. I, I will also say, and Jake has a history of being a thief. Jake has a history of like in the show being not a bad guy, but like running in with a bad crowd is I think the narrative that they go with. Yeah. Um, he had a criminal yeah. past. Yeah. And so like, especially like him being the one to kind of talk and be like, Hey, what's going on here? And then like hearing, this is my story and being like, ah, crap. Okay. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. A lot of the characters are, are morally gray in yeah. the show. That is true. Mm-hmm. So I, Which I, I think will... is what makes it great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, and I will say that there, there are a lot of stories where they keep trying to create morally gray characters and they just make assholes. And so it's it nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like looking at you, Walter White. Anyway, but yeah, for me, was it enjoyable before we started watching it? I mean, I, I think I actually wrote in my notes. I'm going to try and find it. If this existed in a vacuum, I might actually have liked the episode, but it does not exist in a vacuum. And so I have to question a lot of the decisions that were made. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like That makes sense. Yeah. 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 So that's how that's how I felt about it. Anything because like and again, like we've, we've got a little bit of time. This is definitely going to be like a shorter episode of IITP. But uh, what like is there anything else that we just haven't talked about that we really want to talk about? Is there anything that you remember from Adventure Time that's like because their gender stuff is fascinating. 
in a way, but it still like really keeps a lot of the, like the gender binary 100%. Yeah, there aren't like a lot of specifically non-binary characters, specific like and human appearing ones, like I don't really think, you know, you've got characters that just don't have a gender because they're like a, a piece of candy. Um, but they all but also they all have genders. They gender all the candies. Um mm, yeah. specifically. So yeah, it's that is strange. Mm. Damn you, Princess Bubblegum, and your candy <laughs> fascism. Anyway. <laughs> just, yeah. God, it'd be like that, though. Yeah, yeah. Fucking I did find it interesting her. with Lemon Grab. She makes another Lemon Grab who is also male. Mm. And yeah. then they're together? Question mark? I didn't see all the Lemon Grab episodes. They have a confusing relationship and eventually create more horrifying Lemon citizen yeah they get a whole they make a whole kingdom it's weird and then one of them eats the other Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah it's a a whole other thing to unpack (laughs) yeah i don't i honestly try not to think about the whole lemon grab thing because it i mean it disturbed me from the start when when he when he came on the scene, I was like, I don't like this man. <laughs> Let me grab voiced by uh, Rick and Justin Morty Roiland. creator Justin Roiland. <laughs> okay, it's so funny because like I can hear it now. Yep. Like watching <laughs> either really, I can hear either Lemon Grab when Rick's talking, or I guess <laughs> Lemon Grab's more Morty. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's it's one of the three voices Justin Roiland can do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like respect. They're very yeah, distinct I voices. I can't do many, so <laughs> I couldn't do that. But you know, oh. yeah. So let's so let's so we can we can wrap up. Tell people how to find you on the internet if you want them to. I don't want you to find me. It's a totally valid response. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Instagram, um, two headed boy, boy with an I. I'm on everything pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, Twitter are the big ones. It's at Krista K. Coburn. And my name is spelled funny, so I will spell it for you. C-R-Y-S-T-A-K-C-O-B-U-R-N. And I do co-host three podcasts. I have an, I'm, an anthology is coming out that I have a story in and I helped proof. I have a play coming out locally. It'll be on Zoom so people can watch it. But I've never written a play before. And it was picked for a local festival. So I am insanely excited about that. <laughs> That's awesome. That's exciting. Yeah. Congrats. Yay. Yep. And as for me, you can find me on Twitter at Lucretia Deer4, L-U-C-R-E-T-I-A-D-E-A-R. And then the number four is a transphobic also has a Twitter at is it transphobic. And I've just been very excited about this. I started an Instagram and I have no idea what the hell to put on it for is it transphobic. Uh, <laughs> Instagram <it's>, uh, trip. <laughs> It's at is a transphobic. You can also join our Patreon for one dollar a month. At the very least, you will get access to episodes a week before they air live. You'll get access to mini episodes. I'm going to be conducting a bunch of interviews with a number of really interesting folks. Some of them trans, some of them cis, just dealing with gender stuff. And we're going to release that a month early to like to patreon subscribers before we release that publicly and that's patreon.com slash is it transphobic and yeah thank you all so much for listening and cat krista thank you so much for coming out and watching this weird episode of a weird show <laughs> thanks yeah. for having me <laughs> yeah thank you is it transphobic was produced edited and coordinated by ashley lauren rogers the original music you heard was all created by Vivian Aladrin, who you can find on Bandcamp at vivianaladrin.bandcamp.com. 